What's up everybody? So today in this video what we're going to be going through is this new trigger in Zapier. It's going to be the, I believe it's new or updated record essentially. So we're going to be going through that in this video. But if you haven't met me before, my name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize IS. And what we do is we have business owners probably just like you, help them set up all the information systems to help them grow, scale, and save time in their business. So we use tools like Airtable for CRM or asset management. Asana for project management, as well as Slack for communication and Zapier to really connect all the tools together very nicely. So if you're interested in any services, you can check out the link in the description down below, or you can request a consultation from me or someone on my team. But without further ado, we'll get right in the video now. So as you can see, we are here in Zapier. And what we have here is we're just demoing this new trigger. So it's going to be newer updated record in Airtable is the full name of the trigger. And they just added this, I believe this week, actually some people had issues with their zaps, which is what clued me into finding this new trigger. And basically what this is going to allow you to do is it's going to, I think the most common use case is it's going to allow you to sync data between different places a lot easier. So the example that I'm going to be showing you in this video is syncing data between like uh, MailChimp and Airtable or Airtable and any like contacts database, like external contacts, uh, this is gonna be syncing those two databases up very nicely. So the idea here is a newer updated record. So this is really useful with contacts because with a contact, you might change information. So if you change like the email, the phone number, the name, you would want that reflected in your other database. So whether you're using like Keep Active Campaign, MailChimp, ConvertKit, any any others that I didn't mention, this is gonna be super useful. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna come into Zapier, you're gonna create a new Zap in here, you're gonna choose Airtable, you're gonna connect your account, and then you're gonna choose New or Updated Record. And so I'm gonna choose my Airtable account right here. The base that we're gonna choose is the DealFlow CRM. So after you pick your base, then you can choose Table, and so actually before we get through all of this, I just want to come down here and say, this is probably the most important step, which timestamp field should this Zap use to check for updates? So we need to put a timestamp field in here. And this, if we go back here, this specifically needs to be a last modified time. So you might not have this yet in your database, but say you're connecting contacts, you're syncing contacts between two places, what you would want to do is maybe you have, we're gonna make this a little bit more intuitive for you. So if you have phone number in here, uh, you would have your phone number field like right here. And so we'll create that. So you have your phone number, email, and your name. So we'll hide these other ones so you don't have to see these. And we'll just insert a field to the right here and we'll create that last modified date. So if we scroll down here, we can see last modified time. And then we'll, we're just gonna name this so modified contact and so now just name it whatever you want and so you might just click all editable fields if you want anything that's like different in here to be reflected in the other database but for us we really only want three specific fields so this will still be a last modified time which is what Zapier needs but we will change it to specific fields and we will change it to just the name just the phone number or just the email. So after we do that, we can use these selected fields. Now say maybe you had like, if you're using Keep or Infusionsoft or really anywhere that you can tag customers, maybe you change their tags in here and then you can reflect it there. But for us, we're just gonna use name, phone, or email and we're gonna use those selected fields. So now we can come in here and create this. And so we've, what we've now done is now we've now created this. So if I type in, that then it'll tell Zapier that this record has been edited at this time. So 10 p.m. on the 24th. So now if we come back in here, we need to choose the timestamp field that will be used. So actually before that, we need to choose the table. So we're gonna choose the table and what we're gonna choose is company contacts. You can see we're in the company contacts table here. And then the timestamp value that we're gonna choose is modified contact. So that might not be the, yep, that's the right one, modified contact right there. And if you want now, if you're aware of the Zapier triggers, one of them is 
when a record enters a view. So that's how you add some filters here. So maybe you only want to be updating records or you only want this to trigger on a subset of those that are modified. So you would do that by adding a view over here. So if you come over here and you create a view, you can create any of these pretty easily. You might just create a grid view in here and you would probably say Zapier automation and then you would add whatever filters. So we might say that we only want to be uh, editing, or we only want to be maintaining the level of syncing for those whose titles are any of like the chairman and co-founders. So those are the only people that we want to be maintaining that contact information for whatever reason, you can set up your filters for your use case. And then I would come in here and lock this view that way no one can change it uh, other, than, other than you. So once that's locked and it says Zapier Automation, no one's really gonna mess with this view, but you'll be able to come back here and come to your views and it should be right here. If it's not right here, just click load more and it should show up there. So now that we've done that, we can make sure, yeah, we have one in here. So we do have, what you wanna make sure is that you have a good record in here. So, or a good uh, like test record. So it has to have this field, but ideally that field is also not empty. So if you, come to, if you're limiting it by a view or you just added this, I would come in here and change something. That way you can get test data so that you can test out your automation. You can test the trigger and then you can test the action as well. It's gonna make your zap process go a lot smoother if you have some good data in here. So that's why we're gonna use Reshma, I'm not gonna say that last name, but that person and now we can continue through here. So now we can test this and we'll see who we get. So we got a co-founder and we'll see, does it give us a name or anything? Yeah, so it gave us Rashma. So that's again why you would want to have this, this not empty. So just go edit whichever fields you need to based on the, based on the specific or all fields that you set your last modified column to. So that is the basics of how to set up the trigger. Now the action is going to be completely up to you. So if you are, doing active campaign, doing keep, or trying to maintain a level of syncing between two places, I think that's really where this is going to come in handy because um, getting a little bit more abstract here, if you're trying to maintain two lists to equal each other, then what this is going to allow you to do is any new contact you get, it will be up uploaded to MailChimp, as well as if you update a contact, it will be uploaded to MailChimp. So what this is going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to maintain a source of truth in Airtable. You won't actually ever have to go into MailChimp and update a contact. All you should be doing now is coming into Airtable, changing the contact in Airtable, and never and you can sync it up with 10 different places. Now you can just use Airtable as your source of truth and let Zapier do all the manual work of going updating it in MailChimp updating it in Toggle, updating it in Stripe, updating it in Wave, updating it in QuickBooks, all of that. This is really great for that contact information. So say you're using MailChimp, we'll, we'll like come to a MailChimp-like scenario. So if we scroll down and pick MailChimp, what you would do now here, so now you want to use the equivalent of that in MailChimp. So you would use add or update subscriber. So this was either a new or updated record so you want to, in the case that it's a new record, you want to add them. And in the case that you're, it's an updated record and you want to update a subscriber because if you've been maintaining a source of truth in Airtable for a while, they're probably already in that external like MailChimp or active campaign or keep or wherever. So I think you, I think you understand that now, uh, maintaining the Airtable as a source of truth and having it just send send the information, update the information. So you would want to use something like add or update subscriber here in the action. So now another one, maybe you want to be doing active campaign. So if you type in active campaign now, you would now use this create or update contact. So that's the same as like a new record, create a contact. Updated record, update the contact. So that's, that's that for active campaign now keep now infusionsoft changed to keep max classic if you didn't know uh, so we're just going to choose keep i won't show you infusionsoft but here again you would use the create or update contact because 
And like I've been saying, if you've been maintaining a level of truth in Airtable, then there's probably already going to be that contact there. So you want to be able to search for that contact and then update it based on the information that you already have in Airtable. So if you enjoyed this tutorial right here, which is the syncing of information between Airtable and a different place using Airtable as a source of truth, you're probably going to really enjoy this video in the end screen right here. It will tell you all about how to automate an Asana checklist from something happening in Airtable. So Airtable is the trigger and you automate, and it doesn't have to be Asana, it fits well for any project, external project manager or even internal project manager. So it'll show you how to create a project, how to create the tasks for that project and how to streamline it, pulling dynamic data in from the trigger and into the action to create the projects. So I hope this was really useful and I hope that video right there is really useful as well so that you can really get an in-depth dive on using Zapier in all of your systems, whether it's maintaining a source of truth or automating checklists. So without further ado, if you have a great day, check the link in the description if you want to request a consultation from me, but I'll see you in that video.